In this video, I'm going to go through my workflow for handling equi-rectangular image formats, namely 360 spherical photos that I take with my DJI 3 Mini Drone. Now, the DJI Mini Drone out of the box will do a stitch on the fly for you, and it's not bad. Let me just see if I can find it. There we go. Where it's kind of stitched it for you, and it does this thing where it fills the sky hole. See this big blurry thing in the in the top? That's its attempt at a sky hole fill. And I'm not happy with that. It's because the drone can't really take pictures easily above its head. It only kind of looks outwards, and it can go straight down, but not straight up. Actually, this one can uh, has a field of view that's very high, but they've uh, not updated the firmware yet to take that. So you'll always have a sky hole. So you'll see this in a second. Here's what it really looks like, the sky hole. you got this big black, you know, octagon of nothingness up here <laughs> as it uh, can't see above itself to take that proper sky picture. So to do this, I use the software called PT GUI. It's paid software and quite worth it in my opinion. If you're a photographer that spends a lot on lenses, you'll uh, this is much cheaper than buying lenses. So just kind of think of it like that when you incorporate this into your workflow. So let's go to uh, Panorama 163. I'm going to drag that into PT GUI just by selecting them all, going open. As you can see there really quickly, these are the 26 snaps it takes, where it just aims low, aims straight out, aims high, then it shifts to the left and does the same thing. And it takes 26 snaps. So the next step in PT GUI is to line the images. This is where it's gonna put them all together for you. And it's quite good at this. All right, good, we've got some misaligned control points. So here's where it's taken all the photos and it's done its best guess and it's guessed completely right. I can see by the reflection of the clouds in the water that it's looking good. Here it's asking if I want to align some control points. Let's look at uh, 4 and 5 and 6. We see them here. 4, 5, 6. They're kind of next to each other contiguously. And it's complaining that there's not enough comparison points between the overlap of the two. In this case, 6 and 4. We've got 6 on this side, 4 on the other. We're kind of looking at the whole picture. There's not a lot of commonality here. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be one of looking at stuff on this edge and where it would meet up around here. So just to show you what that looks like in real life, uh, let's take something 9 and 10, two pictures for which there are a lot of control points. So I'm going to throw 9 on this side, and we're going to throw 10 on the right, and instantly we see all these common points of reference. Let's take a look at 12, for instance. We can see that the 12 here matches up to 12 here. And you can look at stuff that's very common, like this radar dish in both. So when you're asked to assign control points, you just find something common in both pictures, and you click on it. And you can see it'll, it'll make its best guess and say, are you talking about this thing? There we go. So we've assigned control point 22 on the dish there, just to give it an extra bit of information that's not needed. But like I say, most times, if it looks good with the overall screen here in the panorama editor, you can just stampede to the create panorama screen and it should do a fine job. And I go create panorama. I could see by the uh, first image there that the guess was so good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. Everything is in its place. All right, it's done. I've got this set to 100 megapixels because that's the maximum that Google Earth will take. And Google Earth is my destination for all of these if I like them. So let's open up the one we just made and we'll open this up in Adobe Photoshop and there we go so this is the sky hole I was talking about before where the camera can't look above itself can't look directly overhead so we get this what a lot of people do is they'll take a selection like this and they'll go edit content to where fill and they have it set to auto. And this is what you end up with. Give it a second. <laughs> this looks like meteors are coming to kill the dinosaurs. Not very good at all. Yeah, there's some weird stuff going on there. Looks like a Bob Ross painting gone wild. So what I prefer to do is, I uh, let's unselect there. I'll use this distort filter polar coordinates. 
and I'm going to switch it from rectangular to polar. So it's going to be circular and this hole will be in the center because it is a sky hole. To me, this looks a, a bit better. So I'm going to click here, select that hole. I'm going to go to the selection menu. I'm going to modify and expand by three pixels. So it's going to take this selection, go out three pixels, because if you don't, you get a one pixel line around there. Now I'm going to go content aware fill, but I'm going to change it up. I'm going to go custom so that using this selection tool, I can go around the outside and I'll stop here and see what it looks like and kind of custom feed the uh, content aware fill what I want to see in there. It's looking a bit weird in the center. And when it's approaching something that I can live with, that's not too weird. If I don't like something, I can control Z back and go to the last one I had. All right, let's not fiddle with it too, too much. It actually looks quite good once you back out of it. All right, so you see that outline and boom, it's gone. The filter's taken care of it. I'm going to OK out of that. Now I'm going to flip it back into the horizontal mode. Store, just reverse the polar coordinates command. We're going to go from polar to rectangular now. And now we're going to see that the sky has been filled. And it doesn't look too bad. This is actually naturally occurring in the image itself, these streaks here, which is probably why it was having a hard time. And yeah, I'm not going to fuss too much with that. Uh, one thing I like to look for on any ocean shots are if I have any moving boats Sometimes you'll get, you know, double boating, <laughs> but looks like there was nobody out when I took this because it was near the end of the day. The sun was going down. So the next thing I do is a final touch is I go to the camera raw filter and I'm pretty lazy with this. I'm just going to click auto and you'll see what it does. It just kind of like kicks all the colors up now because it was um, evening overcast. It's gone a bit too far in my opinion. So I'm going to just knock it back a bit, keep some of the darkness with the shadows. Just experiment here with some of these different things, the exposure. Just do the sliders until they're somewhere where you're happy. And okay, and you'll see the photo kick in with the filter. Boom. And not bad. So that is what I'm going to go with. And then it's just the case of saving it. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG because I'm uploading it to Google Earth. 163. So I'm just going to pick one of these just to get the file name completed and change it to 63. And sometimes I go uh, HF, <laughs> SHF, sky hole filled. But you don't have to do that if that's your final. Here I'm going to take a look at the size. I like to keep these under 15. That's pretty good at nine megs. Let's try 11. 15. Let's, you know what? 10. Should have stuck with 10. It'll load a bit faster and there's not too, too much detail we're going to lose. At this point, I use a program that's bundled with PT GUI and I take a look at it. PT GUI viewer. Even at nine megs, it's pretty big. Looking good. And we can check our sky a bit better than what we had before with the Bob Ross thing or the, the uh, blurring. Yeah, we can see the clouds in the water here. Not bad. Yeah, this was a cottage I was at. Actually, that's me down there on the dock shooting the picture yep so i'll pop this up on google earth it's already geo tagged with the coordinates from the drone and we should be good to go so getting it up on google earth is a bit of a chore um, i go to the way i do it being an apple user i will add it to google photos Let's just go and panorama. You'll see it uploading here in the corner. And once it's there, 
I've got to switch over to my phone. So what I end up doing is I'll go into my Apple phone. I'm going to open Google Street View. And there in the bottom right, you'll see a little plus with a camera. It's a little yellow button. I'm going to go import 360 photos from Google Photos. And this is going to show me the photo I uploaded just recently. So it's the one in the upper left that doesn't have a thumbnail. That's the newest one. And there it is. It looks exactly like the one we've been working with so far. It's importing it. Then I'm going to select it. And then it's going to give me the uh, Google uh, <laughs> Publish to Street View Lawyer Notes. And then that's it. It is up there now. So if I click on profile again, I can kind of see these are the see these are some other 360s I have uploaded. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Street View app and go to Lac Sinclair where the photo was taken because I want to orient the map over there. And then when I'm there, I'm going to kind of pinch zoom out and I'll go over to where I know the photo to be. It's in front of this island called the uh, Little Mouton. Where are we? Wrong end of the lake here. There we go. Il Mouton, Sheep Island. And there is my picture. So to help things go smoothly, I'm going to tag it now with a location, like an area. It's kind of tricky on your phone to get it, but at some point, if you click around on the photo, down below you'll see this Pick Maps listing. So you click on that little plus, and then you can kind of geographically just type in an area. And I'm going to type in Lac Sinclair. And if I'm lucky, someone will already have that as a location in Google Earth. There we go. Lac Sinclair, 800 meters away. So I'm just going to select that one. And that'll get tagged to the online image. And I find once you tag it like that, it becomes more viewable. You'll see it in other apps like Wander or even uh, on the regular Google Earth stuff. And you'll see more hits at that point. So from there, I just go to Google Maps. And I can go to, this is me, and go to Photos. And here I've sorted it by date. And I can see the one that I just uploaded on my phone. And already people are looking at it pretty funny. Because I've tagged it, I believe that's the key there. That uh, people can see it a lot easier when you tag it. I've had a lot of untagged photos that kind of just sit there and no one can see them. Also, if you've got the Oculus and you use the Wander app, you can see those in there too. That's one of the main places I tend to look at these at. So there you go. That's my convoluted workflow for handling equi-rectangular uh, 360 spherical photos.